Hey, yeah, bad. Tutorial. Hey everyone, this is Mr. Abbott from Hey Abbott Tutorials. Welcome to today's tutorial on Google Forms and the best ways to use Google Forms for your school. All right, so we're going to click in. Now there's a bunch of templates in here. The first one we're going to look at is Activity 1, Blank Quiz. All right, so we click on Blank Quiz. We name our document at the top. So what we're going to make for this one is a course information document for me as a teacher. So I'm going to get some information for all my students, some feedback from them about the courses they're studying. Okay, and that's done. So now I go down to my first question. I click on Untitled Question, and I'm going to write in the question that I want to ask. So it is... Right, and then over here, we have the option to put in a picture if you wanted to. We can make it multiple choice. We can make it a paragraph, so a long answer, a short answer question, a checkbox, a drop-down menu, or we can upload a file to it. So we're going to stay with multiple choice for this one and I'll explain why in a moment. The first thing I'll do is put in my courses. So I teach. All right, so they're the four subjects I teach. Now we'll go through the options down below. So we have an answer key. So if there's one answer to this question, I can click on here and I can click music. If they get the question correct, they'll know. It will show them music and then I'll go done but I don't want to do that, so I'm going to uncheck it. In there also, I can add answer feedback. I can also put it points on it. If it's worth 10 points this question, I can make it worth 10, and it'll tally it up for me at the end, but we don't want any of that for this one, so we're going to go done. And then we have a duplicate question, a delete question, a required question, so do they have to answer this question? Yes, they do. And then we go to our three dots over here. Depending on what you've chosen up here, multiple choice or whatnot, you'll get different options down the bottom here. The reason why we had to pick multiple choice for this one is because the next question that they get will be based on the answer that they give for this one. So we're going to select go to selection based on answer. As you can see, whatever answer they choose, now I can select where it goes to. I don't have anything else created yet, so that's what we're going to do next, and then we'll come back up here and fix that. Now, for this to work, we actually have to make a new section. So when we come down here, we add section. And then section two of two comes up. So here we're going to put. And then I'm going to add another section again, which will be. Now I'm not doing this in the right order, but that's okay. Another section again. And now what I'm going to do is when I click on the first question up the top here, uh, if they choose music, I'm going to click go to section three for music. If they choose vet skills for work, they're going to go to section two for skills for work. If the students chose music in question one, then they'll be sent to section two, the music section where you put your questions. So that's what we're going to do now. In skills for work, we're going to add a question. The question that you add will go after the section that you've just clicked on. So all I have to do to move it is grab these dots at the top and drag it down. So this one's going to go in skills for work. The question is... So here we put our answers again. Okay, and then as you can see, any time that you want to make them go to a different section based on their answer, it has to be a new section. You can't just make a new question and do it that way, unfortunately. The next tip is when you have a question that you want to put in each section, this is where the duplicate comes in. So I'm going to click on duplicate. It doesn't really matter which course they're studying. I still want them to answer this question. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to drag it down the bottom here first. Boom. And that's how it's done. Activity two, the exit ticket. The exit ticket allows you to ask questions of your students before they leave class every lesson. This one has a nice green background. It's a green. Something like that. Anyway, I'm going to go up to name it again. And then down here, we're going to put. 
then we'll explain to them what that means. Before you leave class today, answer the following questions. Is that a bit forceful? <laughs> Down here is where I put my questions. I'm going to ask their name, just to make it easier to find later on, because we can collate this differently. What is your name? As, same as all the other forms, we can give a short answer question, a paragraph, a multiple choice, a checkbox, and drop down the file upload. In here, we have our first question. This is a required question, just like before. The three dots, I can add a description if I wanted to. Uh, so let's say... There we go. And there's the first one. So in the second question that's already there in the template for us is email. Again. Short answer. Okay. And this is another required question. What's the next thing that we've got in the template is what's one important thing you learned in class today? Long answer. Beautiful. Let's just keep that in there. Make it a required question again. Did you feel prepared for today's lesson? Why or why not? Just got chopped off there. Let's go make it a required question. Done. What would help make today's lesson more effective? So if you're a teacher that likes to get feedback from your students, can't expect a kid to change if all you do is just tell him. Look, I'm not suggesting that for everyone. I'm happy to go with this. And then we go required again. All right, let's go on to number three. Okay, so for the next one, we're going to look at how to make a unit of work for your students. Rather than me going through this from scratch, I'm going to show you a unit of work that I created for my Skills for Work class. And I thought that would be the best way to do this because it would be much quicker. And for the interest of this video being much shorter, let's do it that way. So I'm going to click on it here. So as you can see here, I've added a video. I'll show you what that looks like when it comes in. Just click on it. Click on YouTube and we can go. Okay. And let's go with make a free blog in 10 minutes. Beautiful. Easy tutorial. And I click select. And then here it is here. So let me get rid of that now because I don't want it. And then you can see this video is here for them. So when this document becomes live, you'll be able to click on it and they'll be able to go straight to YouTube and watch that video on professional text messaging. I can align it differently or we can change the picture or the link and then we can remove it there as well. I just added a question and then select the five tips from the how to text professionally video. So there's five tips that this lady gives in her video. And then from those five tips, I've added a whole bunch of answers as a multiple choice. And all I have to do is check the right answer. Because I've already put the answer key in, that's why we have these ticks over here. If the answer key wasn't in, the ticks would disappear and you'll see there's nothing there. The other thing I can add here is add answer feedback. So if they get the wrong answer, I can write... Oh. And then correct answers. And click done, and then that question is done. Now, as you can see, there's another question down here, so it's just another multiple choice question. Then I've added another section, so section two of six. So the next one is just a link. Go to the link below, read the information and watch the video, then answer the questions below. So when they see this document, they'll have this link as a hyperlink, and they can click on it, and it will send them to what I want them to go and read. Then I just add questions underneath that based on that question. And that's all I've done for the rest of this. And the beauty of this is we can put this into our Google Classroom as a quiz and the students will answer it and we'll get all the feedback straight away from them. Okay, let's move on to the next one. All right, for this tip, we're gonna make a worksheet. So the first thing we do is click on worksheet in our Google suite of apps. So for this worksheet, we're gonna create a document for art. Shout out to my art teachers out there. Okay, so we're going to give our worksheet a name. We'll give them an option to put their name. So it's a short answer question, so we'll just keep that in the template. It's a required question, so we want to keep that one on. Their email address, click on this. Another required question, so they can put their short answer in here. Then down here is where we're going to put our image. We're going to call the image, well, let's use my wife's work. Illustrations. Okay, and then on this little drop down menu, we're going to click on it and we're going to change the image. And I can just drag the picture in or I can browse and do it. 
but this way is quicker. And there it is. So then we're going to ask some questions. So the question is, So there you go. That's how you can create a worksheet very simply in Google Forms, and then you can add that to your Google Classroom, which I'll do another video on how to do uh, very soon. Thanks for sticking around for this video, and I'll catch you in the next one. Have it out.